Decentralized finance is the future. More than ever, people are looking for ways to become less dependent on governments, banks, and traditional currencies, especially in these times of crisis, war, and bankruptcy. The rise of blockchain technology makes it possible to perform actions through decentralized applications without the intervention of third parties. You place your trust in smart contracts written in computer code, ensuring that everything runs completely automated. By now, most people have heard about blockchain and cryptocurrency, but don't know how it works or what the possibilities are. It takes a lot of research, and for most people, it's still too big a step to venture into this world. Those who do often don't get past the centralized exchanges like Coinbase, the exact opposite for which blockchain was developed. Welcome to Crypto Explained, the easiest way to educate yourself in a ride around the blockchain. Here we try to explain crypto topics as simply as possible so everyone can understand. In this video, we'll talk about decentralized finance, the opportunities and the risks. As always, no financial advice on this channel. I'm just gathering the facts so my lazy friends don't have to. There's a lot of money to be made in crypto. Just follow the trend and buy the latest tokens recommended by your favorite YouTubers with lots of followers and credibility. Easy. Wrong. Many people think that they have to make the best trades to make a lot of money. They try to time the market to buy and sell at the most ideal moments. However, in reality, more than 90% of people who trade don't have enough knowledge regarding financial markets, analyzing charts, or the utility of the cryptocurrency they're buying, if there's even any utility. Some YouTubers only post videos about the next big trending crypto that gets them the most views and others are sponsored to promote a specific token. If you do consider yourself a trading expert, you still need to bear in mind that due to the extreme volatility of cryptocurrency, emotions can quickly take over and influence your decisions, even without mentioning the fear of missing out. To make these trades, you can easily create an account at a centralized exchange. After validating your ID, you can deposit the amount of money you want in just a few seconds and start trading. These crypto banks make it so easy to trade and actually promote this as much as possible since they're charging fees for every trade you make. The more you trade, the more they earn. Though, I would be lying if I said that trading is the only thing they offered. At some exchanges, it's possible to lock up or stake your tokens, earning you yield in the process. But what most people don't know is that these exchanges can stake your tokens on the blockchain. This is done in decentralized applications, or dApps for short, where they can earn more yield than what they offer you. More on these applications in a moment. First, you should also know that these banks are the owners of the crypto you purchase. Obviously, they keep records of your purchases, but it's the bank itself who possesses the keys to your crypto. Whenever you want to withdraw some funds, you have to ask for the bank's permission and hope they are willing or even able to grant the withdrawal. How they manage your crypto and whether they even own them is beyond your knowledge. Several scandals have already come to light about the mismanagement by some of the largest centralized exchanges losing millions of its users' funds. Hence the saying in crypto, not your keys, not your coins. Some have more faith in banks than others, or some simply don't worry about it, as these bankers are just trying to make a living. Though, the point I'm trying to make is that, like any business, they are trying to be as profitable as possible. That's their primary concern, not the users themselves. Unfortunately, sometimes this results in deceit and corruption. This is where DeFi comes in. Since the birth of blockchain, and more specifically the Ethereum blockchain, it's possible to find automated applications that function without the intervention of any third parties. These decentralized applications work like any regular application with the difference being that they use smart contracts written in cryptography. These contracts allow you to transact without the need for an intermediary. When agreed criteria are met, the contract will automatically take action and interact directly with the blockchain. There is no company behind the scenes that can be influenced by governments. You place your trust in the computer code that is open source. This means 
Anyone can view and read through the code to check for malicious intent. It lives on the blockchain spread across hundreds of thousands of computers around the world, making it, first, never to go offline, and second, much harder to hack. Many decentralized applications have already been developed, ranging from games to marketplaces and DeFi. However, to be able to use these applications, you have to be in possession of the keys to your own crypto. This isn't the case if you're storing them in an account on a centralized exchange as they own those tokens. You will need a software or a hardware wallet that grants you access to your crypto on the blockchain. This might take some research to accomplish, but after your hazing, it's just like riding a bike. There are some popular legacy wallets that you might be familiar with, but if you click on the link in the top right corner, I'll tell you about one that is making crypto easier, and most of all, safer to use. In these wallets, your funds are under your own management, as if they were in a safe at home. Only the private keys can give you access to the wallet, which then communicates with the blockchain where your crypto is located. This wallet can be connected to decentralized applications, opening the door to the world of decentralized finance. This can be very overwhelming at first. People who don't want to participate in a volatile market and would rather play it safe with a traditional savings account will not easily see the benefits. However, it can also be useful for them as there is such a thing as stable coins. These coins are pegged to traditional currencies such as the dollar and are therefore not subject to major price fluctuations. They are designed to hold the value of the dollar. Secondly, some people don't realize that the inflation of these traditional currencies greatly reduces the value of their savings. From time to time, the central bank makes the money printer work over time, which can cause them to lose control over inflation. You probably noticed this at your local store recently. The inflation of a cryptocurrency, on the other hand, can be determined in advance. There are tokens with the maximum annual inflation and other tokens where the supply is fixed or even deflationary. Some dApps even allow you to stake your tokens and receive a share of the inflation as a reward, and this is often in addition to a portion of the dApps earnings. Another downside to the centralized financial system is that it can be a hassle to transfer money from one side of the world to the other. This often takes a lot of time and money due to the various intermediaries that need to approve the transaction. This gets even more difficult if you want to do this with a larger amount of money. Next to that, exchanging one currency for another is often accompanied with a ridiculous rate. This is in total contrast to decentralized exchanges or DEXs that allow you to swap one token for another in just a few clicks. If you want, you can transfer $10 million in stablecoins to another wallet in less than five minutes, if that's the kind of budget you're working with, of course. It is just you and the smart contract. You and only you have to approve the transaction. There are no intermediaries. The associated transaction fees, or gas fees, are negligible on most blockchains. Although I should mention, that hasn't been the case for the Ethereum blockchain. At the moment, Ethereum is the home for most dApps and has become extremely popular over the years. For the time being, the founder of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin, has not yet found a decent solution to this problem. Many people had hoped that a transition from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake would also reduce the gas fees in addition to eliminating the pollution caused by mining. But obviously, this isn't the case. In my opinion, horizontal scaling offers a great solution. This is where copies or forks of the Ethereum blockchain try to help carry the load of the network. This has been done successfully several times, and another one is about to launch, actually. This new fork called Pulse Chain will be a full system state copy of Ethereum, meaning not only the blockchain will be copied, but also all of its tokens and applications. This ensures that Pulse Chain will be accessible on day one and is accompanied by a huge airdrop of free tokens for the users of the Ethereum blockchain. Additionally, another great aspect about DeFi is that you can use these gas fees to your advantage. The capital reserve to swap from one token to another is not being offered by one central entity, as is the case in centralized finance. 
Many different individuals can offer their own tokens in what is called liquidity pools. I'm not going to elaborate on this too much, but the principle is simple. Anyone can pair a few tokens in one of these pools, making them available for other users to come in and swap one token for the other. For every transaction they make, a small gas fee is paid, which is then divided between the various liquidity pool providers. There are thousands of liquidity pools, and when one of the tokens in the pool becomes scarcer, the price of that token goes up. The Law of Supply and Demand If you want to be part of this form of decentralization and earn yield in the process, you should know that there are risks involved, such as in permanent loss. But that's a whole separate video. Other decentralized applications focus more on lending. Cheap loans can be provided at these protocols, and some of them even charge no interest at all. Of course, most protocols do. Though, be sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell as I will be covering a protocol that offers an interest-free loan without any payment obligations whatsoever. Now, since these features are being offered on the blockchain, this means that everything runs anonymously. This forces these applications to work with a collateral that will always be greater than the borrowed amount, which probably raises your eyebrows. Why on earth would you borrow any funds you already possess? This has everything to do with the direction borrowers think the market is going in the near future. Up or down? In addition, there's usually an opportunity to stake your tokens, earning you a portion of the fees charged in the protocol. DApps are constantly being developed, growing this ecosystem at a rapid pace. Thanks to cryptography, these applications are well encrypted, which makes it more difficult to hack. However, nowadays, we hear nothing but hacks and scams in the crypto sphere, and it's not only the centralized crypto banks that are victims to this. Decentralized applications can also get hacked. That's why it's important to know whether the written code of a DAP can be mutable or immutable. When the code is mutable, the developer is in possession of admin keys, just like any regular application. These keys enable him to perform updates and remove bugs in the code, which is a good thing. However, this ensures that you have to entrust your investment to one person or team. In DeFi, this team can remain anonymous. So bear in mind that there's always a possibility that they haven't got your best interests at heart and put your funds at risk. Of course, most developers do have good intentions and will usually decide to identify themselves. But even then, you have to bear in mind that this immutable code offers a way in for hackers due to the presence of admin keys. It's difficult, but it's certainly not impossible. To gain the user's confidence, and especially to reduce the risk of hacks, more and more dApps are immutable. These applications are not only secure by cryptography, but also by the absence of admin keys. Nothing can change the code. The dApp is just like a safe within a safe, that is, the blockchain. You don't have to trust anyone at all, not even the developer, since he too can no longer make any changes to the code. Though, in this case, it is even more important that the code undergoes several audits. It has to be 100% flawless and bug-free from the start. A fantastic example is a cryptocurrency called HEX, a kind of term deposit on the blockchain that has been working flawlessly for over three years without anyone having to, or rather being able to, make any adjustments. The downside, however, is that some launched applications appear to be showing minor bugs. Without the presence of admin keys, these bugs cannot be addressed, which means that the application has to keep running with these limitations. In some cases, this is perfectly possible without causing any major problems. However, in other cases, this can be fatal to the protocol. Extensive testing in advance, undergoing sufficient audits, and especially not rushing the launch of the application is the message here. It's in the developer's best interest to try and keep the code as simple as possible to avoid such errors. Though, for beginners, all these applications seem equally complex. Doing proper research is key before taking your first steps in this new world of blockchain and cryptocurrency. That's exactly why I started this channel, to try and smoothen this process. So let me know in the comments if I'm somewhat succeeding in my goal and what you would like to see differently. 
To conclude, I just want to point out that the biggest advantage of DeFi can also be a disadvantage. It should be clear by now that in DeFi, you have absolute control. You own the keys to your crypto and you decide what to do with it. You don't need anybody's approval. It's just you and the rules written in the smart contracts you interact with. However, this decentralization comes with great responsibility. Making wrong transactions, losing the keys to your crypto, or even getting hacked, you and only you are responsible for your funds. There is no support. There is no help desk available 24-7. Therefore, security is extremely important. For example, double-checking addresses before making a transaction, doing the necessary research before connecting to a DAP, using a hardware wallet to secure your keys, or maybe a laptop solely dedicated for crypto transactions. Lots of possibilities. In fact, there are even DAPs where you can take out insurance against these types of dangers. DeFi is the future. It's growing rapidly. But at the same time, it's still in its infancy. Do the necessary research if you want to jump on board and take full control of your investments. If you get in the right plays, there's a lot of money to be made and passive income is a big part of it. Make your money work for you by staking, lending, or providing liquidity. Enough options out there for anyone who wants to take any level of risk to outsmart the inflation of traditional currencies. I would like to hear your opinion and thoughts on decentralized finance. Let me know if you're already using any decentralized applications and if you have any favorites. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.